everyone, welcome back to Shutter Magazine. I'm Dustin Lucas and today we're going to talk about soft proofing in Lightroom. You know, the most exciting thing um, when you're done capturing and editing a photograph, or maybe you're posting the images to uh, your client's blog or handing over a thumb drive, printing your images has just a completely different feeling. Holding that precious object in your hands and seeing what you've done is, in my opinion, no better feeling. And so the biggest issues working in the digital world are the images we see on our screen, like for instance here in Lightroom, and how it looks in a print, and how to get those how to get those differences uh, you know, less further apart, less contrast. Um, the biggest uh, biggest issue is not wasting your prints and not wasting your time. Um, if you're you know not familiar with proofing or you take your print and hold it up to the screen and adjust your screen they're never going to look the same the screen is always brighter being that it's backlit and your image is always going to look duller being that light is reflecting off the paper um, rather than light coming behind it and illuminating it so there's a few things we can start to uh, look at you know which soft proofing uh, brings to light um, it's that big thing is uh, you, know, you have to calibrate your monitor. If you're not calibrating your monitor, then what's the point? Uh, just hit print and hope the image isn't too dark. Um, you can see here, when I go into system preferences, I already have my screen calibrated, but you can see how different those colors are uh, when I turn that off. This is the uh, MacBook uh, Pro you know, profile that's already on the computer. It's very cool. Um, of course, the brightness isn't changing between these um, because I've, you know, I've, I've adjusted that with my uh, with my calibration system. You know, I have the brightness up to 120 uh, on my laptop. Another thing too, you know, being that being on a laptop, you always have to make sure if I have, uh, you know, I have this setting, the slightly dim display while on battery power. Of course, of course, it's going to make my screen look darker when I don't have the power cord in. I'm running strictly on battery, so I definitely want to turn that feature off. That that's going to uh, waste some waste some time as well, uh, but the biggest thing with soft proofing is you have to understand the color management uh, that goes into it. Um, and I can't stress this enough: whether you're printing at home or using a lab to print, you always want to refer to the uh, specific settings or the recommended settings for your printer, your paper, or your labs. They're always going to tell you, you know, 300 DPI, send us JPEGs, uh, sRGB color space. You know, that that seems to be the most popular. Uh, color space to use and is the most universal uh, just because it's a little more limited I mean it allows more printers uh, to print um, you know that range of colors it's 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 within the printers limit limited range um, of, of printing colors and images um, but looking into systems and thinking about uh, how to calibrate your computer screen to your printer to the paper that you're using uh, color monkey photo has a very affordable option uh, which gets you set up um, on screen with the calibration system, it has a color spectrometer built into it. So you actually, uh, you'd print out uh, these blocks of color, um, whatever paper media you're using, and it actually, you take this device and scan over the top of it, and it reads that data, the RGB values, sends it back to your computer, and builds an ICC profile for you to use when printing. It's, I mean, it's, you can't get better than, um, you know, capturing your images, getting them onto the screen and having your paper matched to your screen so everything you're printing um, is all matched and it won't you know, waste time. You won't, you know, you'll edit for printing, you can edit for web, um, you know, different sort of output processes uh, to look at. So uh, going back to when starting with this image, I had it in Photoshop initially. Um, I have all my layers here. What you'll notice in Photoshop, bringing it in, I had to convert the original raw images um, into a color space. That's how I had to bring it into uh, Photoshop. I converted it originally to Adobe 98. As you notice here, if I go to Assign Profile, my current profile is Adobe 98. Now I can si assign a different profile, um, you know, sort of the quick way here. Also, if, you, if I'm interested in converting the profile and I want to do it uh, you know, with a little more quality, what I can do is here is go to Edit and go down here to convert profile and it's going to take it from its existing Adobe 98 and I can choose whatever profile I want to turn it into as well as some conversion options with the intent um, as well as I normally just leave that on the Adobe ACE uh, as well as black point compensation uh, these these features here are a little bit more uh, a little bit more advanced for what I'm for what I'm doing 
that you have these options when converting your color space. Uh, there's also an option if you want to do batch conversion um, in file, you can go to scripts, image processor, you can turn a bunch of images into sRGB profile and JPEGs as well. Um, you can either have all the images open, select your folder with your images, however you want to do it, but it's just a batching process where it'll convert them to JPEGs and, to, and into sRGB, uh, which is pretty fast and convenient. Uh, so after doing that and, and bringing this file into Lightroom, now I want to start using Lightroom's features to do some soft proofing. Well, in order to get the soft proofing uh, settings and adjustments in place, I can strike the S key and it takes me right into the proof preview. Now you're going to notice a few different things. Um, I'm showing kind of white paper around the edges here. I can choose different uh, different backgrounds to make my image look a little bit darker. Uh, but I'm going to stick to paper white for my background in the proof mode. Now you're going to notice here that I haven't created a proof copy. So I'm actually working on the original image, which isn't always the best case. You definitely want to create a proof copy, which I can click here or hit command apostrophe. Now, we're, now we've completed a virtual copy. What you'll notice here is the profile is going to automatically be an sRGB. Um, a couple options here, uh, sRGB, Adobe 98. I can click other and I can start to look for other profiles. Well, I'm not seeing any of the paper profiles that I'm using. So what I need to do now is I need to go onto uh, my paper manufacturer's website and start downloading. And I'm probably going to butcher their name, um, but on the Hanandul uh, paper uh, website, on their support page, you can download ICC profiles. I can choose it by manufacturer, the specific printer, and start to look at paper groups. Now, depending on which paper I'm working with, I can choose it from a range of paper weight and, pa um, and finishes on the paper. So there's quite a lot. Let's see here. I think we're a matte and fine art smooth with our photo rag paper. Um, photo rag is the uh, media that I'm you know, testing with today to sort of show you the differences uh, and what your image can look like in that actual ICC profile. So once these are downloaded, you just need to get them installed. Um, on the Mac system, uh, what you need to do is locate your library folder, color sync, and profiles. As you notice, it has all of my profiles here. These are all my calibration profiles, and I always name those by the date that I'm calibrating, as well as some, some standard profiles here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and open up another Finder window, and I'm going to go to my ICC profiles here. I'm going to grab all these, all of my Hanunul papers drop them into my profile and if I go back to Lightroom they still won't appear in my list just yet. So what I need to do is restart Lightroom the same way if you install a preset. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll quit. Skip that. Go back into Lightroom. sure we're in develop mode, which we are. We'll hit our S key. And let's find some different some different paper profiles. So this is automatically showing up here. Um, what you'll notice is you can check any of these options for them to for you to quickly reference them in this list here. So we click on photo rag and we're seeing the dramatic difference between what we originally had what this profile is doing for us. So, you, so as you can see, it starts to simulate that look that the paper is going to give and what your contrast and tonal range is going to look like. The important thing is, is we can simulate the paper and ink. Now we can turn that off and it kind of gets us back to where we were originally. So as you can see, there's not a whole lot of difference going in there to the photo rag. I'm going to open, open it up a little bit. You can see you got a little more detail out of the shadows. It kind of just flattens everything all together. Now what we want to start to look at is our gamut warning, which is going to tell us what colors aren't going to print, um, print correctly. So those are going to be, as you can see on her lips, you're going to see some reds in the end as well as some
and just using these areas. Now in order to fix these particular problems, we can start to look at dropping the exposure which are going to move pretty quick, dropping it down almost a half stop. If we lift our white point, we'll drop the white point. It's not really doing too much for us. We can also use the hue and saturation target adjustment tool to just drag that down. That seemed to remove a lot of orange and red issues that we had. And let's click back here. And all I have to do in order to initiate this tool, it's pretty great actually, I click drag down to lower and lift up to increase. So I can lower that until all of that information starts to disappear. Now the question is how is that going to affect her lips? And if we turn this off and kind of toggle between here, it's kind of killed the saturation in those. It's not, it's not a whole lot but it definitely removes that down. I think that's a better option for us to do than to just completely darken the image when it starts to get a little too dark. So that is an option for us. Um, what you'll notice is you'll have some monitor clipping in blue, which I'm not as worried about. I'm more interested in the clipping. But this image overall, let's get a little bit larger workspace here. I like to sort of turn all those other panels off. I don't have a whole lot of a uh, whole lot of gamut warning issues in this image, especially not on my subject. Everything looks everything looks pretty solid in terms in terms of the gamut warning. So I think I'm going to leave uh, leave things where they are here, and not not remove too much of the not change too much of the exposure settings since I have a JPEG. I mean, yeah, I like the way the editing is looking. Um, I don't really need to drop the black point and start messing with that. That's only going to start to make the image look uh, a little less I think we'll lose some details in the shadow. So um, looking into uh, you know the before and after, sort of seeing the differences between uh, between our profile, the, the photo rag profile and the original image itself. Now we're ready to go over and look at the print mode. So let's go ahead and bring all of our panels back. We'll go over to the print module. And you'll notice it turns our image this way. We just need to change the orientation. It's not a big deal. Change it to landscape. Let's start to look at some of these settings in here. Now I have um, my print resolution. I usually set it to 300. I have the option for print sharpening. This is a good output sharpening option. Uh, I've already done sharpening to my image, so I usually turn this off. But this gives you uh, the ability to do some output sharpening if you haven't already. Um, I definitely like to turn this off. It's you don't have too many settings to control here, and if I need to sharpen more, I'll do that in Photoshop or bring the image back in to have a little more control. Um, in color management, I need to make sure I can choose uh, the photo rag paper, so that way the profile is using that specifically. Uh, we, the color is being managed by the actual profile rather than by the printer, um, as well as we'll leave the antenna perceptual. Uh, we're not going to make any adjustments there, and so. Printing that as an option. That would be your first uh, your first look. Now this would be soft proofing. Remember, um, it's probably going to look you know, a little bit different. Uh, and I say that lightly between your print and the screen. You know, we've, my screen's calibrated, uh, but I definitely don't have a, a color spectrometer to match my paper to my screen. That's something if you are printing at home, it's worth investing in. You know, I know four to five hundred dollars for that device can be um, you know, kind of almost maybe as much as your printer or uh, half the cost of it, but it's definitely worth having um, just so you can have everything matched in your studio. Uh, something else too, if you're working with a lab, a lot of uh, a lot of photographers always look for lab profiles and wonder why those aren't given out. Um, I'm going to go to Bay Photo, which is a, a very popular very popular photo lab. You can download their uh, their ICC profile, and it's a very generic one. Um, and what we'll see here is I'll install it. my list and I'll reopen Lightroom I'll click here and we'll turn the Bay photo proofing profile on like I said it's very generic um, the reason being is because because they, they have a wide range of paper they have a wide range of printers 
Um, they're calibrating their printers daily, uh, but depending on all those different variations and variables, it's, it's very difficult for them to just have multiple profiles to give to you. And it doesn't mean that your system and what you're looking at on screen um, is set up the same way as they are uh, in their system. They're a much more controlled environment. Um, so they do provide a, um, you know, a basic ICC profile, which um, you know, works, for, works for most. But I always recommend get proof prints done. You, know, you, have, a, you have a handful of prints um, and the profile and everything set up on your screen, your screen's calibrated, you know the way your images look, send off for some proof prints, see what they look like, um, and make your adjustments from there. I mean, it's, it's a much cheaper process to look at uh, you know, proof prints than to you know, send off for a 30 by 40 print and it comes back dark and um, blocked up in the black. So it's really important to do uh, proof printing. I can't stress that enough. Uh, as far as incorporating that Bay Photo profile, you can see here bay viewing and so as you can see we can turn that on and the difference between our big difference between the bay this is just a viewing profile you can see it almost looks a little bit cooler it's a it's a little bit flatter it's not as uh i should probably turn the black and white and take the simulation off you can see the subtle difference it kind of just gives you, looks like it warms it up, um, warms the image up for us. Turns a little more range in the background, a little bit brighter. So, let's zoom in here. So as you can see, there's a lot of variables and a lot of ways that you can soft proof. Um, and soft proofing is a great start. If you're not already proofing your images, if you're not, if you don't already have a system, um, color spectrometer, uh, calibrating your screen, you got to calibrate your screen. Uh, there's no, there's no reason not to. Um, if you've been sending your work off and everything's been coming back, um, you know, I applaud your uh, your ability to turn your screen down and, and understand that relationship between the how bright and off the colors are on your screen, sending it to your, uh, sending it to your print lab. Uh, but if you are going to get a printer. Um, I definitely recommend you know the Color Monkey uh, Color Monkey Pro uh, Photo is a is a great option, um, you know under five hundred dollar option. But you know as long as you're calibrating your screen, you can get a device for one hundred and fifty to two hundred bucks. Um, you have to tame your screen. Please understand um, that when you are working with the majority of your monitors, they're going to come uncalibrated, and they're just you know working with an image like this. Um, I would I would make the print warmer than it needs to. I would I would the way that I would uh, compensate for this image is I would increase my uh, increase warmth automatically just to get it back into the realm where it should be. Um, and by doing that, if I now calibrate my screen, or put it back to my profile, you're going to notice how much warmer I made this image, and it wasn't necessary. Look at that. That's gross looking. Uh, so. Those are some things to think about uh, between what you're seeing on your screen uh, and matching that calibration versus what's going to be in the print. My print uh, most likely would come out much darker than this as well as just as yellow. Uh, it looks pretty gross. So um, definitely definitely want to keep your screen calibrated. That's very important. Um, soft proofing, it's a great start. You got to start, you know, you got to start somewhere. Soft proofing is great. Um, when you're printing with labs, proof prints. There's no other way to go from there. Um, all you're going to do is waste your money, and you know, without proofing from your screen to your printer, inevitably that's all you're going to do, and waste paper. So, um, if you guys have any questions, definitely reach out. Um, be more than interested to hear your setups at home, your workflows, things that are working for you, things that aren't, um, and tune in next month.